We were casting that game to, uh, yesterday on Inferno, but here's a, a miracle, a Christmas miracle. There's no Julies in play, it's just five USPs. So normality has been restored as, oh, uh, Dex has been gushed. Yeah, two HP and some utility. That's not it's the dream. One of the first rounds as well, the CTs haven't rushed down middle, Chad. I'll, I'll say that. And I think it's the first time that the odds have been dead even uh, on one X bet. I feel like Astrala, sure, wasn't their best showing yesterday, but we know they can do a lot better than that. Yeah, I, I think maybe complacency after they rumbled complexity on map number one, and then maybe just and the focus. It was actually Inferno they got the, the dub, right? So interesting pick from our sports to uh, go into this one, but... Uh, Flames not looking. Doesn't matter, apparently, but uh, Zipex will be the one that goes down. Does make up for it. Lots of damage inflicted so far, but back to the four and four. Config can be tested next, oh. and... He does not pass. It will be Torchy to crack things open towards B. This is a bit of a chaotic round once again. We'll see whether Farley can find the very important kill here towards the B bomb side. Back. He's got They're lots of back. attention towards this side of the map and Frozen still towards the pool. Yeah, well, the bomb's going to be planted in the A side in a couple of seconds here. So Frozen just, just to stay alive. Now they'll be able to identify that the bomb isn't here. Dexter will be planning default, does have a Molotov to work with as well, but he is very low. Remember that goosh at the start of the round. It's going to be on exertion here. Had a great debut yesterday. Blame F will be aware that he got the headshot. They haven't seen the assist yet, so one player can be confirmed to be low. Spots the shadow and exertion with the nice shot towards Blame F there. Just Farley remaining. No diffuse kit, bear in mind. Two players to find as well. Dexter tucked in towards the apartments. Time of the essence now. Jumps up towards the graveyard, and it's a nice maneuver, but uh, needs to get his skates on here. We'll okay. see if he can find the first kill. He doesn't. It's not quite clean enough, and uh, there the he comes in. Yeah, you're absolutely right. As soon as he touches it, out of luck, out of time, and it will be Mouse Sports picking up the pistol there. Not a very traditional one, as you might expect in Inferno. Everybody goes down there with the bomb as well, so good stuff for Mouse to pick that up. But one of the keys right there in the pistol is something that I think we'll see Mouse do a lot. Uh, some of the notes yesterday, when Complexity on their T side were getting opening picks against Astralis' defense, at that point, they were gamble stacking. Astralis right. were sending four players to either site after some really nifty info plays. Now, Maus are potentially thinking they can exploit that. If they can find the opening pick and expect Astralis with the over-rotation, as well as consistent three-man B stacks at start of rounds, sure. maybe that's a gap that Dexter and Cyclone have been able to find here while watching the VODs and demos overnight. Probably the demos, not the VODs. They don't want to listen to us clowns. But, yeah, uh, definitely not. A few more details in the demo <laughs> as well. So then, we do have a full eco from the Danes, blame F for the P250, and a rifle set up from Mouse Sports. They have got one MAC-10 in the mix as well, in the hands of Dexter. He can be thrown into the choke points first and detect these stacks. Uh, as you mentioned, there's actually a four-man A stack going on from Astralis right now. And looks at things, we're just hunting for some mid-control from Mouse Sports. They don't necessarily have to commit to this. They're doing deeper smokes towards the arch side and library, just going to be flashing up and seeing what's available to them in terms of information. Well, the weapon advantage here, a wrap is beautiful, right? If you come up the short side, you have to ride the balcony, the pit, the side, graveyard. Now they're at least get to use these weapons at range. Unfortunately, it's Dexter's Mac 10 to round the corner first, and he's spotted at least a little bit of information. And, and with that kind of setup, Shad, with two players towards the pit, potentially, you can maybe guarantee they're going towards CT spawn might be the right call here. Torshi narrowly misses out on the intel as they push towards middle. They know they've been rumbled at this point, and... Uh, Need to get a bit of intel themselves, as Torshi will find the first frag of the round. A look how passive Zip is during all of this. Torshi's going to mop up two more kills top mid, and this was the passive position I'm talking about from Zip. He's been able to find a MAC-10 during all this. There's 35 seconds on the clock here. Farley's got another kill, but they shouldn't have any issues with his guns out. He's going to hit the shot, and they will. So two casualties against this full eco round. The Strauss will be buying into the rifles here for round number three. So in that type of situation, on the CT side, two kills, you'd be content with that. Absolutely, and it's led them to a situation where they have a nice healthy buy here. Farley, especially on the AWP, no helmet, could be an issue against the Galils, but overall looking pretty good. Now, I'd like to see Farley be a little bit more assertive here. It's one of the rounds they probably need him to find an early advantage. Uh, it took him a while to start being activated on the CT side of Inferno yesterday. We didn't see him look very dynamic until about the mid-stages. We'll see what he's up to here in the first gun round. Well, he started doing his best work by the time they got to Dust 2. Looks like they're going to do the power boost here to kick deep down mid, but Glaive's already been gooshed ahead of this. is Torji, no orb, no problems. That's a lot of damage to inflict over towards this A defense with only two prongs. Config is rotating back over from the B site now while well, Zip and Blame are locking down this banana position. And that was another thing we noted yesterday. Blame was the front man, Zip was the supportive element of all of this. Ooh, that's a nice kill from Farley there. So on the flash, exertion goes down and the number advantage is in play here for the Danes. Absolutely true. Mouse Sports with three smokes remaining, one flashbang as well as they just uh, juggle some utility, tag each other out of the bomb side. It's gonna be Farley now setting up the turrets towards the B side of the map. 
Maybe want to boost Zipex and CT Spawn as well. We'll see which way they're inclined. But you're right, they still have the five on four here, but JDC will be towards the apartments here, setting up a lurk smoke by the looks of things as his teammates patrol top of middle. Uh, Mouse, when they get in these type of situations, will potter around for a while, they'll look for one more kill, and then if they don't get it, likely to see a save here. And that's a perfect deploy of the smoke towards Pit. The one way is gonna ask a few questions is JDC attempting to self-flash here. Three AKs they could be handing over. Dexter charging in the in-game leader, wants to get it done, and he's just gonna go down this crossfire, very potent. Really no way forward, jump in a pit, JDC's got one and two, the double up with Frozen what? getting a third on the side, it's now a two on three situation for Mouse. Very fortunate on the timings there, what a leap of faith that was from JDC, he can't believe his luck, the player towards the headshot position, not looking his way, he gets a double kill, round done. And that was a five on four in favor of Astralis, finally opening things up, but Mouse Sports with the lurk smoke, Dexter going down early as well. there. And they just had no idea the drop down could come from apartments. They seemed like that eluded them completely. It felt, felt like they didn't want to initiate for that crossfire because would, the crossfire was very strong. Love to see that from JDC's POV if possible, just to see what he's up against. Surely the CT in that headshot position is watching nothing but that apartment drop down once the Lark Smoke comes through. Yeah, and is the pit player just waiting to activate? I, I'm not sure what's gone wrong for Astralis. There may be a miscom, but a, a great batch of shots there from Mouse, JDC, and Frozen. When the chips were down, Dexter threw himself into the den. Exertion was already dead earlier in the piece, so yeah. essentially a 3v5 after that trade came in. Well, they keep it clean. Mouse Sports with 3 and 0 right now. Let's have a look at it. Let's see how that went down. This was the opening kill from Farley towards Boiler Room. Blind as well. Very nice. Config gets the first kill on Dexter. As you mentioned, 5 on 3. Reloading. This is the moment. So, Glaive. Oh, okay. He moved out of position and was looking towards the bomb side just as JDC okay, down. Okay, so, so Config started reloading. He doesn't have eyes on Shaw anymore. He's moving to reposition to take the balcony fight. Glaive's popped up his little head to watch Shaw and have the crossfire with Sai. And in that time, JDC's found the perfect timing. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but uh, Mouse Sports looking very, very good here at the start of the first half on their pick. No four spy to speak of, but some saved weaponry. Oh! And a juicy grenade from second middle oh. for Molotov as well. They're in a lot of trouble here. Farley <laughs> might go down before he even sees anyone. Excuse me. Uh, we um, were trying to have an aggressive maneuver here. Wow, that's very unfortunate. They take so much damage en route towards the apartments there. Farley, I guess, at least he's the AWP. Needs to be very careful at this point. Still wants to challenge top and middle. Looking down towards the T steps and. Luckily for him, no one really looking at this point. We do have Glaive investigating his options towards second mid. Might be able to find a timing, Chad. Might be the operative word. His AWP goes down, and that's going to be the end of that. Torchy with a double. They should pump the brakes at this point. No one has to rush into a bomb side. Let's make sure we go together. And uh, here comes the flashbang towards A. Config to defend. I dare say he'll probably get the first kill. Where's the trade, though? He can actually pick up a rifle as well, but doesn't have the time. Four on two. I think uh, just holding on to these upgrades right now for Zip and Blame should be name of the game here. If they can get this AWP back, Torji would be doing well to give that over. His third in the rounds and handling these investments of the save. Okay, Blame. Did well. Torji's looking round. very confident, isn't he? Great round. I think one of the keys here is uh, Astralis try to stay, let's use the word proactive, right. right? because we've seen them rotate around a lot. They did it on Nuke. And a lot of the time they're doing it individually. It doesn't feel like there's too much of an idea. They're just trying to scamper over to support the other site quite quickly. And in doing so, with the default style of Mouse, if they try and find a gap, right, and, and, and Mouse are accounting for it, whether it's immediately or give them a little bit of space and then peek back in like we just saw Torji do there, they're going to be in a lot of strife because you're not going to be able to pull off these moves one at a time. You need to be a unit here, Astralis. Well, speaking of which, Farley is going to be moving around, joining the fragging unit at B. Blocked by the flames for now, but uh, he'll want to get some vision towards logs if possible. Blame will get towards the half wall as well. And uh, there's any other flashbangs just to uh, reclaim some control potentially, at least at the bottom area. Yeah, I think one of the keys here for the Danes is going to have to be the economy of the utility here. Make sure you're not expending too much of it early because Mouse haven't shown any threats. A flash over the top at this point, that is going to do a whole lot to Farley here. He can stand and deliver. Frozen shots at least give slight information. And Zipex is ready to help initiate this fight for Blame F. So waiting for the banana control. We have a minute and 10 on the clock. The Torshi man at the moment. Four kills in the previous round. He waits patiently here towards the lock's position. Nice Molotov to disrupt the defense here, but the flashbang comes over from Zipex, but it does nothing for them. Blame F goes down, tagging each other through the half wall. Farley gets a taste of lead. 
and uh, they'll take advantage and just fall back towards A now. Oh, Knowing yeah. that Farley's towards B, that's uh, that's a real problem. They should be able to wrap here. They should be able to use this information quite quickly. It's actually a long smoke and a moto smoke, so they're going to be coming straight up the guts here. I'm sure plenty of flames stalling this one out. Like this. The time is available, but Glaive, he's going to take that first shot onto Exertion. The pressure's coming. He's completely blind. Config needs to bail him out before the rotation can get here. And they've stalled out again. Maus, the reposition from Config will drop the bomb, and they just keep coming. Fantastic work from these two defenders on the A site. And that should be Astralis' first. That's uh, a very comfy one from Astralis there. Up against it, losing that first pick as well, but uh, a solid hold from Glaive and Config there. It got a little bit awkward for Config trying to jump up on the scooter, but repositioned, got himself uh, two very nice shots there, dodging the flashbangs, and it will be the first round for Astralis there, with multiple members surviving as well, so not too bad. Yeah, I think the complacency being the killer yesterday against Complexity uh, is something that they want to try and avoid, right? So today, back on Inferno and being given the option to be here thanks to Mouse and then Nuke, one of their home maps where they did have that unfortunate blunder of a triple OT loss. I'm sure they want to right those wrongs here today. Just to note as well, we cannot stress the importance of the pit player holding onto their utility. The fact that Glaive had that incendiary to cause chaos just as they're executing that was absolutely everything. But uh, here we go then. Into round number six, we are going to see the, the motions deliver towards the banana area. And once more, it's going to be Blamer pushing down. Gets Torshi, and that's through the smoke as well. Another opening pick here for Astralis. Yeah, this is looking good now full banana control they don't really need to over rotate in this situation and and you pointed out the pit players you too well same for a lot of members right at this juncture farley still has a, a molly a flash a he zip with a smoke and a flash remaining so if they can hold on to these nades and mouse keep defaulting they could almost just block them with utility alone blame f looking very active this round already pushed towards b and now wants to taste the middle he gets himself tucked in he's got the crossfire around him as well config behind him farley towards short We'll be watching towards Boiler as well. So there's the incendiary, just trying to make sure they don't have to take on multiple targets in. Exertion with the Galil. This is a brave peak. Does he compensate for flame here? Apparently not. That's a good swing. And now just trying to get out of there. Maintain that five on three advantage. You can even go back towards B. That's amazing. They just needs to live here. Do they see the smoke? Yes, they did. Running so straight deep. in. Extinguish and go. Flame's already here. He's doing it all. Kill Banana, kill Mid, and now having to rotate back no. to get it all done on his own. JDC's leveled things up. And on the flash, Convict's blind. It is going to have to be the boulder here. How many can you blame get? Bomb getting planted. Does he want to leer forward? Yes, he does. The flash is good, but three in the round. It might not be enough. Zipex so committed down towards the bottom of B, and they just called the blame F was top of middle right. Today is take that information and just completely open up the B bomb site. Just Glaive remaining now. He's got a smoke and an HE. That HE well, should maybe even find a kill. There it is. Frozen goes down. One versus one after okay. JDC. He's actually got himself two kills in the round so far. Perfectly positioned smoke. Has got the kick. Could probably full defuse this one, Chad, I would say. Doesn't go for it, oh. but still comes out on top. The experience shines through, and it will be Glaive getting that defuse. What a swift pivot that was. Nice clutch from Glaive. It's Glaive and Blame combined, but this is the question, right? Kassar brought it up on the desk. They're talking about Blame having these fantastic ratings at the top of the score, but the team's still not looking like everything's settled in. And in this situation, he gets three kills in the round, and it looks like they should have lost it. So thank right. God for the in-game leader, the big man himself, sitting in the middle. This is how it opened. Right, and it's, it, you see it and you go, oh, it's a smoke kill. Well, it's not really, right? They mollied him out of position. They yeah. flashed forward. They nade him. Funneling them down towards Exactly. They're right. putting him where they want them. It's a really good stuff. Talk about proactive players. as well. He gets a kill at the bottom of B, then goes towards the top of middle. Kill there as well. Rotates back around, finds a third. And uh, yeah. And it's Farley over towards A with Glaive. Just the Desert Eagles here. This is the pressure, though. That, that's the right play, right? Dexter, as much as it looks a bit silly, he's on his own, struggling through a smoke. Right. If he had a teammate or two with him, potentially they get that room. Now they're stalled out completely. Yeah, you have to take some risks on these sort of rounds, and uh, there was an opportunity there to find the opening shot. If he gets it, they've got an AWP and some mid-control. That would be massive. It uh, doesn't quite work out for them. Five on four should be Astralis' round. Nice and tidy here from Config, but uh, does overstay his welcome. And here we go, Blame F is looking very confident today. You love to see it. Three on two, still a bit of an uncomfortable spot here, especially if this kill comes through with the Desert Eagle. But uh, Torshi now with the AWP, he might get a free shot towards the bottom of mid. This kid's a menace. This kid is an absolute menace, and there's time to work with here. So how are they going to get back this bomb? Is JDC going to play for info? Tucking in towards the chicken pit is Blame. Head down. Well, when the peak comes through, so well handled from Blame. Doing everything and more right now for Astralis. JDC notes where he is, but Blame to Sharp. Seven kills for him. 
And look, we, we know that he is the star player of this team. We've had the conversation yesterday. We know Config can be good. We want the consistency. We know that Glaive can be a nuisance. We we, we want a bit more out of Farley. We had some highlights like that nuke almost clutch yesterday almost clutch, on yep. Dust 2. He was doing his job. The pieces of the puzzle, whether or not they're the best, right, they, they can definitely work. And it's just about getting everybody on the same page for Astralis, which is not how they looked as they moved into map two and three yesterday. Map one was fantastic. We thought it was going to be a quick 2-0. That was on Inferno as well, so uh, hopefully we can start replicating that soon. Still down around four to three. Mouse four to another full buy here, and uh, the grenade battle continues towards B. Glade this time, getting a little hot under the collar. Down to 44 HP, and they'll complete bombardment towards the bottom of Banana here. Zipex just confirming the logs is cleared, so they've got full control. They'll still have some residual utility. They had an extra member come over at the start, but uh, using a lot of smokes now to gain full control at the start of the round. And it's obviously very important to know what utility is being thrown in this pattern. The deep smoke is great, but you can see that they threw the broom molly to clear out the coastal covey. They nade it over towards the log position. They're isolating their fights here. And that's one of the keys when taking the banana control, knowing what jewels that you're looking for. But the jewel that Glaive wants is under the top of this smoke, and he's got a full gray screen, so we'll have to back off. Yeah, nice idea, but uh, ultimately, it looks like Mouse Sports might be falling back towards B. So blame F with the bait and switch set up. He's got Zipex at the very bottom. Another good smoke, it is to buy some time. Very deep. Oh, coming straight through. Zip this time round didn't get caught off guard. The deep smoke was perfect. The gray screen completely encapsulates Mouse and they're screwed right now, just running into A. This is where JDC did some good work in the earlier gun rounds here, but this time, doesn't have the team, doesn't have the time, but he's just gonna waltz on in, one and done, but can the trade be there? Torji is still alive, the bomb ushered to the site now by Frozen, should be planted any moment here, and they have another smoke on Torji to deploy. Okay, I actually like the look of this. This is certainly possible. Frozen loves these sort of situations, and Torji, if he can find one more, give him a two versus one, perhaps, that could be enough. The pincer maneuver comes through, two players towards quad, and blame F behind that smoke. They have one HE remaining, so a lack of utility, but they do have the kit. So, a bit of a one-way smoke deployed. We'll see if that HE can connect at all. It doesn't. Frozen expects it, down to 22 points of health. And about halfway points here on the bomb. Torshi needs to find a frag, and he knows it. Nails that first shot. Player towards library as well. And it's through the smoke that Zipex will take down. Frozen, remember, he's only on 20 points of health. A decent effort from Mouse, but ultimately, Astralis will be tying things up 4-4. Four to four, And uh, I think that's four rounds in a row. Indeed, it is. That was very well handled there, and Blame just hiding over towards the mini pit, uh, Moto, whatever you want to call it, hiding just in that little cubby and not peeking actually is the trump card, because you see when Torji flicks back to look towards Library, he's not ready for a player to already be so far out. So Blame just sitting pretty, just waiting for his team to activate on this short fight, and then he swings out and, and gets this duel on an angle that's a little bit tighter than I think Torji would have been ready for. But where is the pressure going to come? Is it going to be a banana all-in? We know it's three players time and time again here from Astralis. Looks to be the same once more as... Ooh, Frozen just ran back to spawn to pick something up. So they did have a set plan off of a spawn that we'll have to wait a moment here, Maus. Same crowd control utility to top of banana here to try and dissuade, but Farley's AWP it is looks posted. Like the apps pop. We've seen a lot of this. In if they go so now, if they, if they go now, it's okay. But they need to go now. Yeah, I think you're right. You can see the config set up for this. He's actually looking into the wall, avoiding the flashbangs. Glaive will take all the aggro, try and suggest he's the only one defending, and then config will swing around 180, mow them all down. Looking perfect. There's the chimney flash. It is going to be the apps pop, and they've lost a player before they even get it. So there's the flashbang config now to turn around. There it is. Perfectly done, and uh, that should be round under oh. control, unless some um, wacky sort of shots come through. That's not bad from Dexter. Still two players towards quad, but uh, well handled. Should be all she wrote for the round, and there it is. So you can see Astralis more than ready for that sort of approach. You know it's a partial buy coming in, and that's a very likely outcome. So well done to Astralis. Looking a bit more cohesive here, but maybe Mouse need to rip a page out of the complexity strap book. Remember they did the early mid pressure. They had some mid pops because sure. they were taking advantage of this 3-2 lean. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Especially when you're losing Banana so convincingly, you're not even challenging it. Why not just change things up, go for that mid-control, apply pressure there, take their vision away, force a rotation, then maybe explore your options back towards Banana. But uh, they'll take a timeout for now, and maybe that's exactly what Willie want to challenge and try and get up there. Time will tell. Farley, though, feeling the confidence once again. Looks down towards second middle. It's Dexter, takes a lot of damage. It's whatever plan they had in mind hasn't worked out so far. The battle towards Banana rages on, and the blame F. That comes out the victor once more. It's happened to Frozen twice already with the jump, right? He, he just jumped again there at the tail end of that spam, so maybe gripping so, his mouse a bit hard. I don't know where he's got it bound to, but either way. It took the time out, and it was just more of the same, it seemed like. If anything, with a worse result. I think they were being stubborn on this. They're, they're assuming that Astralis are going to eventually go back to a three-man A start, right? right? So this is where the bluff comes into to the in-game leading, right? What, what decision is going to be made? But we covered it off yesterday. 
Astralis consistently started 3B at the start of almost every single round. Farley went for that type of shot we just saw there into second mid a bunch as well. I don't think he hit one of them, but no. uh, he definitely gave it a crack. But it is at least information at the start of the round that no one's crossed over. You can hear footsteps and uh, get a quick rotation as well. They do go quickly in towards... And Frozen there probably a little bit uh, concerned about what's going on with the whole mouse situation. But if, if you extinguish their close wall molly, they're going to nade close wall because they expect you to run through the flashes and flames. So here it is again. They really want to continue this biff. Still a three-man start towards B. Frozen will avoid the flames. Ah, it's a... Oh no, there you go, the late spread. The late spread on the flames of the deep Molotov and Frozen on 2 HP. Well, that's his round over. He probably knows it as well. And uh, fortunately, just a partial buy here. So six rounds in a row for Astralis. Complete dominance here at the banana area of the bomb site. Blame F really is feeling it. I wouldn't be surprised if he even pushed this smoke, Chad. We'll see what he's got in mind. Gets closer and closer. There's the flash. And uh, indeed, he will push it, but there is a player Towards underpass here, not the cleanest spray, and Torshi will finally get the advantage. Ooh. And they recover the rifle, though. You can't give away anything here in a game like this. We saw it yesterday against Complexity. Zip posted up on the logs. We'll get one and done. As we'll go in. I think it's fortunate at least Glaive got a kill on the other side of the map. The rotation from Farley. He's trying to come as quick as you like. There is a smoke for CT. He misses one shot, though. This could be problematic, and he knows the smoke makes things a little bit more tricky. I'll have Tech Nines and actually two rifles coming in at this stage as well. So the HP not a factor against the AWP. Good shot from Farley. Staying oh. composed here. Really, really well played. Should be able to get the third as well. He wants it. He's going to be hungry to close things out here. Great round. Good sequence. Yeah, very well handled. Yeah, uh, that pressure moment there as well, right? Because if he goes down and he drops an Absolutely. AWP over towards Coffins, that is a, a real issue. Even allowing them to get into a post plant situation there. That, that would have been problematic. So uh, well done. Survives the round as well. Three kills towards the end. Seven in a row for Astralis. They are coming online after a 0 4 deficit. Let's have a look at the, the replay here. Lovely shot towards Dexter. Dodges the flashbang, quick as a whip on the second, and a clean shot on the third. Love to see it. Coming to life in this tournament now. Yeah, well, this is the thing. I remember the, the kid in FPX. You're watching him play. You're, okay, well, the kills have happened immediately. So uh, apologies for that one, ladies and gents. But uh, one's towards Top Banana. The other, you saw it on your screens, an AWP. Farley picking up where he left off in the previous. Half full flash for Zip here. Ready to initiate and Config is the man to pick up. Back perfect. at that, it is too good. And they're not going to swing back out. They're not going to take the fight or are they frozen? He lies, he waits, he breathes and he'll take down Config and we find ourselves again into a three on three. Maybe overstaying his welcome a little bit there, Config, but uh, it was such a dominant shot. I suppose he fancied his chances, but uh, we've got a bomb site smoke there thrown from the logs position. So a bit of a lot coming in from JDC, just trying to show presence here, hopefully find a kill chat. That would be huge, but... If anything, he might be confirming that A is open when they're flanking behind them at B. So if they retreat to try and join him here, which they are, this could get problematic. Dexter aware of the potential of the push, though. Rises to the occasion and takes down the in-game leader. It's going to be the AWP, though, of Farley. That actually brings it back to a two-on-two. -two. Gets the bomb down as well. So this is a very important frag. 35 seconds remaining, and Zipex is dropped towards a B site. And now they know exactly where Farley is, but he's gone towards the apartments. All of his utility available, but it comes down to timings here. If they can recover the bomb and just exit towards the B side, that would be fantastic. But here he comes in the boiler room. He can hear them. Which way do they go? That's finished. Hey, oh. <laughs> Could have got, could have got dicey. Yeah, that. At least they were buddied up, right? Exactly. If, they were, if they weren't buddied up, and he gets a free kill, and then he gets to isolate the one on one. So, so back into a winning way. They break the streak of seven. Finally, Mouse. So that's something to work with. Got Torji leading the charge with 13 frags. The next closest on his team is JDC with seven, six apiece for Frozen and Dexter at this juncture. And we hit that shot. Yeah. Nice start the start. Not too bad. But you're right. There is almost no way, even if he gets that first kill, he, he likely goes down to the boiler with the AWP there. But uh, here we go. Non-stop action at the start of these rounds. There's always a bit of damage inflicted. And the CTs finally go for the three-man A setup this time, Chad. So they feel like they've shown enough presence throughout the campaign of this first half, just to alleviate some of the bits and uh, focus their efforts towards A, and hopefully Mouse Sports are feeling the same way to walk into this strengthened A bomb site. A really important round here for Astralis. They might get broken here. This is a place where they're gonna have to find the finances in question. Again, top pressure applied as Banana Control has been completely absconded. Flash is good, Farley's position has been noted, and now they can start applying this pressure. Well, they've actually got five players alive for once and full mid control, so 
The round is in their hands, but Incendiary's being received towards top and middle, Config tucked in towards Trash, and we'll see if they can detect him here. It's looking a little bit awkward for them. The swing can come at any second from Config and ruin their day. He hasn't got any backup though, however. No one to bait him in. They overlook us a lazy clear from Dexter. And luckily, it only cost them one. So, back to a three on three. They've chosen the B bomb site here. Back and forth we go. One player to defend that Zipex. Needs one and to survive here. Why waits for the backup? There it is. Does he drop down? Indeed, he does. New position, but they'll be very aware of it. Tested once again, but it's been cracked open. That's going to be a two versus one in favor of Mouse Sports. Bomb going down. Glaive recovers a smoke and he won a two on one before so can he replicate that form this one's gonna be a bit more difficult here they do have the hp this time round and the open ct spawn having the jump peak here would need a blinder of a shot right there onto torji who has been peppered away out chipped down ever so slightly frozen now alerted to his position nice. the incendiary is a good throw and they are both gonna have to swing this together torji dipping and dodging away now frozen's offering himself up they're almost stacked in a totem it's torji to finish a great round from him. That frag as he comes through spawn already heads up. There are no zips in sight, but Torji's focused for that rotation kill, which then allows them to focus in a two on one situation against Zip. No, there's no diffuse kits as well, no helmets, fortunately up against the AK 47s. As we go back towards B, seems like they fancy their chances once again. We'll see whether Frozen can break through, but once again, how many smoke kills has Blame F got at the start of the round? He's doing his job over towards Banana, that's for sure. Feels like this has just been especially early one-way traffic for Astralis, but Mao's uh, looking to break through, and as they tap towards the barrels, a lick of the flame, that sound cue, very telling, is now considering his options. Is it going to be a pop on towards the side? Will entry flash Getting forward? In on the... Exeter wants to take a fight. The smoke is there, but he's ahead of it. No gray screen for him. He's just going to fight around the flames. Dexter to take down Zip. I don't even think he knows how he got that frag, and Blame just has to batten down the hatches and hope for support. Config's already rotated through. Blame would love another kill, and he's going to get it. And sent them packing, they're rotating right back towards this A site. That's a crucial kill for Blame F there. If he goes down, they're in a lot of trouble, but still to be tested, will be falling. Passes with flying colors, and now Torchy in the three versus one. He has got a slight chance here. If he can take down the initial frag towards the A site, he'll have a time for the plant, but uh, not looking good. Apprehensive, not sure where to go next. Waiting for a mistake from the CT side, hoping they'll be inquisitive towards the short area, but why would they be? They've got the all blocking it down. Time ticking away, Config towards the library, backing up both sides if required. And Torshi with his smoke, I'm not even sure what you could do with it. Smoke in front of the bomb site, trying to get a default plant down. Doesn't look good either way, just hoping a mistake is made and someone oversteps the mark. He can isolate the fight against Farley somehow. He need to bait the shot, jump, leap, hope, pray, something. Farley's seen enough and he's gonna get the kill. A really good map from Farley so far. The CT side, 15 frags for him. He's keeping towards, it's actually, he's the top of the scoreboard. On the other side, Torji has 15 as well. Have to sing his praises when he's having a good game because he Absolutely. doesn't get a lot of props, right? He's still in that shadow. Everybody's thinking his device coming back, but Farley's here in the server today producing. And that's what matters the most. This is the kill from Dexter. And uh, Blame, using this wall of the smoke towards the back of the side, it gives him more avenues to look for peaks. So a defensive smoke here. Crucial shots from Farley, you're dead on. He's living on all fronts, opening kills, being assertive, dynamic, and uh, clutching out when it really matters most. Denying the plant as well, he's into round number 15. The money is quite weak here for Mouse Sports. Two pistols, a Galil, AK-47s, and they're testing their luck towards Banana once again. Frozen has been melted every single time by the utility. He's going to be battered and bruised after this half, but uh, for now, on 100 HP, and at least hasn't been naded to death before the round even starts. I'll check in on that utility damage as we do move into half time, and then we can just compare the pair, but everybody on Australia has been dishing out in that department. And chipping away through Banana again, and oh, well, multiple players softened up here as aids are exchanged. Damage is definitely a little bit more detrimental on one side than the other. Plenty of smokes here, a couple of flashes, uh, enough to work with in the forward presence of JDC that you can see highlighted, uh, hoping to take advantage of this rotation back. They have flushed out the mid defenders. JDC again over towards the apartment position, causing an absolute ruckus. Leaps forward and it's Farley to pluck him out of the skies, but it feels like this will be an A finish with all this pressure. I think it has to be. They've got uh, the A side surrounded, but the CT's on rotation for sure. Held off by the smokes for now, 35 seconds. Exertion, waiting for the opportunity to strike with the Desert Eagle, but Config, bit of a shooting gallery situation here. We'll see whether he can pluck him off, but the smoke is taking vision away, and oh. there it is. They're all looking towards the bomb site. Config now, with a lot of pressure on his side. Can he deliver? Frozen drops down and denies him access, and now it's actually a three versus two in favor of Mouse Sports. 
Bomb goes down towards the corner of the bomb side. Play map has been so good so far. So much damage inflicted, but another two versus one. Zipex. Time for a clutch, sir. He'll be looking towards the headshot position and takes Frozen down. No problem whatsoever. That should be it. Low HP for exertion. Just needs to get closer and closer. One bullet connecting and he'll take the half nine to six, but the bomb ticking away and calm as you like, Chad. He gets the job done and there it is. Nine to six. Astralis, you have to say, it's a pretty decent half. Yeah, great half, all things considered. You have to be happy with this. They lost the pistol. They were down four to nothing. Looking good, especially with them picking up the victory on Inferno yesterday versus Complexity. Let's see how this one unfolds as the spread across the map is a bit feely outy is the official terminology, I do believe. The 1x bet odds have now flipped on over to favor Astralis and just waiting in spawn for information. <laughs> this is odd. Yeah, well, they're, they're hoping for a fast play so they can rotate to the correct site here. But right now, with all this info that's being garnered by Dexter over towards Boiler, it's bad info. Astralis are playing a bit of a default round themselves. Now, did they hear the Boiler jump up? That's going to be one of the bigger questions. Because right now, Zip, he's got a couple of members here not too far around. Well, a very flexible setup, to say the least, there. Just have flashes to defend. It's going to be bullets, Henry. I, I, they're going to get overwhelmed. Well, it's going to be a quicker smoke from Zipex, not the Lurk smoke. Trying to jump out towards the pit. He'll throw a Molotov down as well to disrupt the defense. And Dexter, not ready for it. This could be problematic now. He's going to be flashed off as well. It's awkward. He'll be the first player dropped. And they've got full control of the pit position now. So much damage being done through the smoke. The flank comes online as well. That's a great shot from Glaive. Five versus three now. Do they want to pump the brakes as they actually have players coming from quad? This is actually looking perfect from Astralis. Exertion will find one consolation frag, but that's about it. Absolutely decimated in the pistol bed, Chad. Can't say much more than that. And Farley keeping the good form. Uh, three kills in the pistol round right there, so impact through and through. You love to see that. And that setup, it, look, for, for Maus, you understand it. It's a bit of a classic. You want to be reactive. You hang a couple players in spawn. You get early banana info. You get early boiler info. And then you can call the stack on the correct site. But the slow approach from Estralis meant that Maus, the early info was all for naught. This is the initial jump out. You can see Dex, they're just recovering from the flash in that fight. Glaive finishing off Torji, who's trying to chip in and assist these players who are marooned on the bomb site. But a couple of whippy shots from Frozen and Exertion with the highlights of that one. As they will force by in here. Well, after losing to Complexity yesterday, Astralis certainly needed a wake-up call. They're looking much better today. A great team effort, but speaking of which, the whole team oh. swinging around towards the banana area. Good flashbang, but two kills for Astralis to take one casualty in the form of Blame F. The big man goes down finally. And uh, for now, just removing that vision from the CTs, trying to see if there's any weapons to garner here, but uh, unable to grab them just yet. That's Dexter now alone towards the sandbag position. Needs to be careful here, Dexter, with these sound cues. Glaive looking for a boost, maybe thinking there's a few more players lying behind this half wall. Smoke's starting to fade. The jiggle comes out and well, the bullet exchange either way. Dexter knows he has to stand and deliver. Wanted to send them back to the other two defenders on that A-bomb side of Torji and JDC. Right now, they should be saving, and we have about 60 seconds to sit and... Oh. No. Well, it'll be 40 once they plant the bomb. So if they plant the bomb soon, it can be quicker. Come on, boys, plant it now, and then we can save a couple seconds. Come on, come on, come on. Save come a couple on. of seconds. Come on. It's, gonna be that? Exa it's exactly going to be 40 seconds either way. So, through. Well, there we have it. That's Astralis. After losing the pistol in the first half, going down 0 and 4, they've managed to get the pistol in the second, convert this as well, presumably get the third. So they're in very good stead to take this map, I would say. I agree, I agree. And I think with Nuke coming up next, uh, Astralis uh, going to have identified a couple of the issues that they were experiencing. There was more than a few. They had yes. a very good T-half early. Yep. And then the issue was their rounds, CT right? side. And then yeah. all the match points that they were unable to convert, that was what some of the bigger issues. They would have this amazing round, and then they just wouldn't close in the, in the next. So uh, I think that the, the VOD review that... Uh, they would have done overnight. Hopefully nets them a, a couple they, of changes. They couldn't defend an upper rush in the CT side. Like, sure, we talk about complexity and JT teams usually be very good at the flashbangs and forcing their way towards bomb sites, but there was almost no response. They were getting zero kills on the upper attack. So definitely something to look out for there. But uh, for now, here on Inferno, 11 to 6, Astralis looking great. And Floppy was a massive nuisance as well with all those vent dives, right? Absolutely. So uh, we, I guess we can save all the nuke talk for, for nuke. But let's see if Mouse can sense. put up any resistance here. It's a bit of... Uh, Bonus situation, we do have the Mac 10s and Galils, but up, up against the, the pistols themselves. So Mouse Sports will save the 5.7 and Deagle, and uh, we'll see how many frags I can get. That could be an important factor into the first gun round if they have a clean one here. I think that that's important in itself, right, is the, the clean factor in these type of rounds, because we saw a couple yesterday where they were losing multiple players to Absolutely, blocks. yeah. You're right. They come down to like just two players surviving, one player surviving. Sure, they're winning the rounds, but then as soon as they lost that first gun round, all hell broke loose, yeah, right? Exactly. They had nothing. They had no utility. Uh, they were struggling to buy the orb. It was a bit of a mess there, so they need to tighten that up, which they have. 
And these rounds can still be dangerous, let me tell you. Five sevens, deagles, a couple of P250s, all it takes is one player to go down to uh, a cheeky push, and all of a sudden you've given them a rifle and it can get very problematic. But uh, so far, so good. They've already got full B control towards Bernardi. You can see Blame F tucked in towards the sandbags. Now exploring the options towards Midi. We are going to check these boosted positions. JDC gets one. That's beautiful. About, about what you expect, but yeah, a real nice execution there, making sure they eradicate all the risks. The boosted players were blind. Not much they could do apart from find one kill. That's the exact type of counter you want to see when taking the mid wall. Everybody putting their life on the line and the util as well to complement that, right? The smoke long, the porch molly, the flash that they turned. That was a very well handled scenario there from Astralis. And this is looking like a whole new team today. Now, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. We, we know how the series ended after Inferno. But so, so far, so good. It, it's been hard to fault much of this. Pissed around, lost with the conversions, lose the first gun round, and then lose two later gun rounds, and you, you have a 9-6 half. It sounds pretty par for the course, really. Yeah, I think it's fair enough, absolutely. Especially on your opponent's map pick, uh, you'd probably be pretty happy with that. So, as mentioned, as I speculated, there was a chance of a bonus situation here. And indeed, we're going to see it. The MAC-10, the Glaive, the Galil for Config. Suggest that we do something a little bit faster, perhaps, try and send the MAC-10 in to cause a bit of a ruckus. But for now, a default mentality. Farley towards the underpass position. A flashbang ready towards top and middle. Config gets up towards the boiler. Zipex getting in towards that apartment as well. So here comes the flash. Config will confirm that boiler's clear at least. Uh, that it's going to be dissecting the map at this stage. Yeah, diligent stuff. You're not taking any risks on those type of fights. Might better util damage done to blame here. He's been knocked on down to 58 points of health. Now the AXQ coming in and there's pace behind this. Glaive is leading the charge towards the long side. Torch's orb, however, is at the porch right now. And as he swings forward, there's multiple targets and not Watch connecting the dots there. He will tag up Farley, but Farley gets the better of him. And that's a huge kill to find. That's the Orpa, the action man, taken out of play. And B's left wide open here. Mouths have completely rotated. They absolutely have. Config tries his luck through the smoke. Costs him his life, but he does do considerable damage towards Dexter. But as Chad mentioned, the B side is open for business. Exertion will rotate in. He's only got a single smoke, Chad. I don't know. Gonna disrespect know. it. They'll go through it. Yeah. Well, they've got the smoke down towards CT spawn. He'll need multiple kills to that. through now. Good effort, to be fair, but he only finds the low HP of Farley. So it's up to Frozen now. Still at three on three. Certainly possible to win this one. They have a kit on the back of JDC, but just one smoke once again and a double stack towards the Ruins position. Frozen will have his work cut out for him. X is just leaving A now, so... If there's any chance for this retake, they will need to find some traction before Dexter him. gets there. Peek out from Frozen. Zip is gone. And another fight for Frozen. That's huge on the blame. It's just going to be Glaive now. He's clutched a couple times. Can he do it again? The flash forward is not going to get him. He needs to hit a precision shot and won't. JDC on the defuse. And that is a great round for Mouse to pick up here on the CT side. Yeah, quiet to start from Frozen in the first half. is getting battered and bruised towards that banana position. But that's a fantastic sequence of events for him towards the Ruins area. We said it was a big kill. He manages to get both. Flashbang towards the bomb site, and they shut it down. And remember, that started off with an open B bomb site as well. Exertion tried to do what he could. He only got one frag there. Left him in a three versus three. But Frozen, this was the kill just to mention. Bali was low, but uh, Glaive got him back through the smoke. It's all about Frozen, though. Really, really well done. Look at that precision, the first one. Zipex didn't stand a chance. Have to face him as well. Blame was low. And JDC to close things out. 12 to 7. Mouse will post their first on the second half here. And we go back towards Banana. As uh, the utility will be thrown through. Glaive's very low, isn't he? Knocked on down to 27. Torji. It's more just to keep him on notice with those flames. But Banana Control looks like Astralis will have an easier time driving this quadrant of the map than what Mouse had in the first. The deep smoke coming through. That's a slight gap on that left-hand side, and Extinguish here to hold them back as well. DeMaus want to throw themselves into this. Lock horns here with Blame, who's over towards the logs. Exertion seems somewhat aware. There's more utility. They're actually expending a lot here, Astralis, to kind of fight for this control, but Exertion just on the other side. Probably going to be the better end. The barrel will betray. Ooh. The spam through in the opening kill. Yeah, that's not good news for Mouse Sports whatsoever. No chance of the trade. It was an all-in maneuver, and one that doesn't work out. Some damage done towards Astralis, to be fair, so they're still in the round, but Torshi might have to be activated here. He's actually towards B in a very defensive angle. Do they need to get him set up towards the car position, maybe allow a rotation back towards the A site? He's not even sure if he can do that because a Molotov's just been thrown. And at this stage, we'll see what's going to be the case. That's actually a CT Molly, but it's all about A. 
JDC about to be tested here, and he hits a great shot. Can he find another? Apparently not. So now they can just focus towards the bomb sites up to Dexter. Only good for one, and we know the two remaining CTs were towards B. Yeah, really good trading here. If Flame takes this gun to Torji, this is not a way. normal angle. Flame even takes a lick of damage there. Wasn't that the orb? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Frozen shot him from a weird angle, but yeah, I think it was the orb, and it did, like, what, seven damage or something? <laughs> what just happened there? Well, regardless, we'll find out. the round should be Astralis's. 13 secured here as Frozen did great on the retake in the previous. I don't think he can pull off the same miracle again. The post-plant positions are just way too strong for this. They're going to get $2,400 per player into the next round, um, which puts them in a very problematic spot. Frozen, you drop off mass, I suppose. Um, they'll be having some sort of a buy with JDC in his 3K. With this sort of scoreline, I, I dare say, Chad, they might they might go for the buy. We'll see. Yeah, this is a curious one. It's gonna it's gonna be telling of, of how much heat they feel that they're under now. They like, well, we've conceded 13 and we're happy to give away 14 and we can still bring this back because that's gonna be quite the comeback here. Yeah. It's uh, pick your poison time, really. There's not really a good solution or the right answer here. It depends on what you're feeling. You've got the AWP, you're on the CT side of Inferno. Just to know we've got a technical timeout, but uh, let's have a look at Config's efforts here. That was exertion. Trying his luck through the smoke, didn't work out. Very clean round here from Astralis. Good trading, as you mentioned. And we'll see, what did he fire off your poison? There's not a correct answer here. It's whatever the team's feeling. You've got an AWP, might as well go for it. It's gonna be very difficult to recover a 14-7 scoreline. 13-8, however, more realistic. We'll see. Yeah, so this essentially for the map here. Banana Control gifted over. Frozen at the sandbag position. He's going to get wow, over one run immediately. That's going to be Flame falling to the flames. And Farley, he has just been fantastic in this map. 23 really? kills. He's only died nine times. His impact has been through and through. Well, unfortunately for Mouse Sports, even a four and four wouldn't favor them with the low buy they have. And a four and three is nightmare fuel. They'll be spread very thin. And for now, just the MP9 and uh, a flash and an HE to defend. The only viable position, I suppose, is on top of first orange. Is get a quick kill, drop down. But uh, a minute and 10 on the clock. They've recovered the bomb, and the map is well, wide open. Well, this here for Astralis, little do they know where the orb resides. It's been left to its own devices in the apartment position. And as the bomb leers up mid alongside of Config, you have to be very, very careful about this. Glaive stays in limbo. He can still rotate between both sites. Config has found the path through to mid to B. Calls this one clear. Surely at this point, you would get the assumption that Glaive might regroup with Zip, join up with Farley and Banana right now and start applying some pressure as this frag from Config should be his. JDC turns into the fight he was aware and now it's just Dexter they have to find. They're actually going to go towards A. They're actually going to take the bomb towards oh, A here. And that so is brutal. very lucky. <laughs> just kill them all. They, they, they understand the objective can be done two ways. We can plant the bomb and it can detonate, or we could just take away all your guns and ruin the hopes and dreams of Mouse here on their map choice. Well, oh. Dexter, it's a good spot, but maybe not if they're coming mid to B. Uh, yeah, I think you might be right there. Nothing could be done, Config. You know he's here too. Farley hasn't left Banana. Yeah, and it's going to be... A final kill for Convict, presumably the MP9, not known for its range. Uh, it's going to be 14-7. That was the all-in maneuver. $2,900 per player, Chad, into this round. And I suppose you, you might Deagle. buy again. I don't know. I, know, I think they were just Deagle here. Hosted after Inferno and then the first half of Nuke. The, the, that first half of the, uh, of the, the matchup was fantastic as far as they were concerned. But here we go again this time. The aggression down banana will net them some room. There's a gap on the smoke here for Exertion to work with. And... Frozen's actually been peppered by a stray bullet from Config. They seem very aware of this prospect, and that is going to leave Mouse with only one choice to back on out of dodge. They don't have a lot of utility to work with here, and I can't believe they're bought again. I can believe it, Chad. I love it. I want to see this. I, I love to see the chaos ensue. I feel like they can win this round. A bit looser. Pressure's already off. We might have accepted. This game is done. So there's the first kill. Exertion and the grenade doing work here. They're actually finding a lot of damage. And uh, you can see they're, they're ready to get stuck in here. Really heads up play. Uh, as soon as that AK was dropped on the ground, they scooped it up and threw it over the fence. So you better call your mum to go next door to pick up that ball because you'll be operating still with these MP9s. You can see it right there. Very quick fingers from JRAS. As uh, the number disadvantage is still in play for Astralis, but they still have the weapons, they still have the util, and they still have enough time as Dexter has rotated over to bolster this B defense. No one there, actually. So it's actually a full Aileen from Astralis. Slowly but surely making their way towards the A bomb site. As mentioned right before, with the advantages taken towards the arch side and hosting up an arch for rotations as well. Config, you know he's going to take these fights. 
Looking for any opportunities. He knows that lesser weaponry is out, so he has the range advantage, but they're not giving anything away here. Tucked away. Torshi, JDC towards the pit. Very passive play, and the MP9 comes out on top once again. This is getting awkward for Astralis now. This is their last chance to find some quick kills before the rotations come through. The bomb even goes down while they know players are still towards the pit. JDC, they know he's there as well. Already found a kill. He's towards headshot and doing considerable damage towards the snipers here. There it is, back to a two-on-two. -two. Chad did question the buy, but uh, maybe he was onto something because this round is still falling apart. They will not have a kit. Last chance is going to be exertion coming from the apartments here. Frozen. Lies and waits towards the smoke and all those advantages they found, Shad. It's all for naught. It falls apart at the last moment. Frozen can't even defuse the bomb anymore, looking to upgrade his MP9 potentially. But there we have it. Map point, 15 to 7. Now Sport's pretty much done at this point. Yeah, they can get out some M4s here if they have the sil silenced variety equipped. There's three of them available. I think maybe four if they really want to take some emissions in their buy. But this map choice, it was questioned by the desk and rightfully so as the scoreline does dictate. You would think the only map they looked good on yesterday was Inferno, and, that, and that's the one you fixed. But, but like, you and I definitely saw some interesting maneuvers in that oh. game of Inferno, and maybe that lured Bows into that false sense of security that, well, we, we know they're a bit complex on this, but they still look actually pretty rough around the edges. But uh, that seems to be far from the truth. It's a different looking Astralis here on map number one, and is this going to be a mid-push? The flash is pretty good. They were ready for it. The spam preemptive. And that's going to be Dexter removed, the in-game leader with a heads-up manoeuvre. He's gone, and Fali has been fantastic. 26 for him, may as well make it 27. Frozen a shot through the side of the wall there. will knock him down to 22 points of health. And Fali, this is just a look from him. He'll take another tag through. Hey, boys, they're both hit. Come on in. Oh, oh my over, days. Fali, give him the beans. Through the smoke, through the wall, straight to the dome. Fali is on fire. 27 kills. Attack found towards Frozen as well. 15-7. Call this one done. They've only got for masses and an M4. Bare bones utility to try and fend off a full HP Astralis. Uh, a boost from JDC. He'll be flashed off, unfortunately, we'll before the end of the challenge. Yeah, he'd have to get multiple frags. You can see him trying to turn away. Nice first kill. Does he dismount? Apparently not. It's getting a little bit messy now from Astralis. And he's got one the three one. piece. Hurrah. That's not bad at all. JDC can't believe his luck. No flashbang sent his way, and we might have another couple of rounds here. Well, that was the worst sequence from Astralis so Hated far this that. map. They have been fantastic. I was Otherwise, kind of like being quite jovial about it. So everyone's going to flash him. That's the end of it. But it's went up one by one. They can still win this. Blame's in such a forward position. That smoke towards CT. Frozen is at least acknowledging the fact that this is possible. We'll blame for the hard clear. Doesn't matter. The low HP is the issue. Now we have a two on two. Back in the mix. Both players coming from CT spawn. It is going to be the first responder of Torji already slinking in towards the coffin position. Yeah, that's a ghost defuse kit right there, so don't be, <laughs> don't be fooled. You gremlins in the system, it seems. But yes, a two-on-two with no kits available, just to be clear. Time is of the essence and up against flashbangs as well. They need to find out where these remaining T's are. They know where Blame F is, but there it is. A very strong...